In the kitchen, craft is everything. An ounce more, a minute less can make all the difference. As a Michelin star chef, I've learned that it's not just about what we make, but the way we make it. And in this series, I'm teaming up with the Balvenie to meet the extraordinary people keeping alive some of our most precious handcraft traditions. Along the way, I'll be drawing inspiration and gathering ingredients for a unique meal of my own, a celebration bringing together the very best of British craft. Air, water, flour. For millennia, the alchemy of these three simple ingredients has created a food that's been the staple of almost every civilization on Earth. Bread. Yet with 15% of us now avoiding gluten in our diet, the humble loaf has never been more maligned. In the depths of rural Suffolk, however, one man wants to change the way we think about bread. For baker Will Worcester, it all starts with how he sources his flour. And when I came to visit him, I discovered that to help him out, he has one very special piece of equipment. <laughs> wow! Oh, this is amazing. Michelle, hi. Welcome to Bardwell Windmill. Let me show you around. Cheers, Will. Built in 1823, this is one of the last remaining working windmills in the country. Wow, it's a beautiful place. Isn't it just? How did, how did you get involved in this windmill? Well, uh, my grandparents bought it uh, back in 87 as a bit of an escape from the rat race. And it's been in the family ever since. So wh what are the advantages of milling your own flour? Well, we can do things a little bit differently. With most flours that are used for the vast majority of bread that we consume in the UK, uh, the roller milling technique is employed. So, if I can show you, this is wheat. This goes in one end, and through a series of giant rollers, the husk is pulled apart, and you're left with the flour, as much of that, mm. the white flour that you can see. With stone milling, the outside part of the grain is basically ground in as well. So you're, main, you're, you're keeping all of the nutrients and all of the colour yeah. and, of course, the flavour. Absolutely. Well. But you can yes. use all kinds of grains as well. Yeah. Down here, for example, we have some lovely rye grain. Uh, this rye grain itself was grown on the salt marshes around Essex, so quite local. So this, this would give what flavour to your bread? Uh, compared to wheat, very, very different. So it gives it, I think, a lovely earthiness, a little bit of sweetness as well. Mm. I'm looking for a special loaf of bread for the craftsman's dinner, so I think rye would be great. Would it be possible to mill some here? Absolutely it would. To engage the windmill sails, Will must first hook together a series of giant cogs. Rye is then fed into a hopper by hand, drawing the grain deep into the grinding mechanism to emerge through a chute on the floor below as flour. Most bakers use ready-made commercial yeast to make bread rise. Will, however, uses a natural alternative. A starter, or sourdough, is created by mixing flour and water and leaving it to ferment. It's a process that leads not only to a more complex taste, but some surprising health benefits. Right, let's start making this bread then. So, the sprouting right in. Yeah, that's in. And I'm just gonna mix that. So there's one more ingredient here, this here, the sourdough. Yes. Or the starter. What exactly is that? That is basically the uh, opposite to a commercial yeast. It's my own harvesting of organisms that naturally exist in the flour, in water, and, re and on your hands as well. And in the air. And and in the air, it's all here. around us. And what's the difference between that and uh, commercially bought yeast? Obviously, the potency of commercially bought yeast is what makes it so uh, well, usable. You can make a dough rise in possibly around an hour and a half. Mm. But subjecting a dough to uh, long fermentation can actually release nutrients that are otherwise bound up with, with, with compounds. So how long does uh, your bread ferment for? Upwards of 20 hours. Wow. 
So that long, slow process of fermentation might be more digestible for people who have intolerances. I think so. As the yeast breaks down the flour, it creates bubbles of carbon dioxide that make the bread rise. Will must then knead the dough to give it strength. Stretching the mixture aligns strands of gluten in a mesh. It's this structure that supports the air pockets forming in the dough and gives the finished bread a light and airy texture. So we've got the dough here. Yep. That's uh, just been rested. Yes. This is ready to, to knead away. Ready to basically. knead. Let's yeah. go. I'll carve up half of you. I should probably really try and learn a thing or two off you as I. You started as a. <laughs> you started in the bakery. I started in a pastry shop. Yeah, at the age of sixteen. Right. Although uh, the first few jobs I got, uh, I, I wasn't allowed to touch any kind of the pastry. It was more cleaning and peeling of vegetables and, and fruit and I, stuff. I still get the same experience, <laughs> even running a business. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the the bit that you enjoy the most? Yeah, yeah. Anything to do with sort of touching the sort of tactile nature, feeling something go from a shaggy sort of mess to <laughs> something that resembles a nice shiny glossy ball of dough. After successive bouts of kneading and resting, Will uses a flour lined cloth known as a couche to shape the loaf. He then sets it aside overnight for one final period of fermentation known as proving. With the hard work over for the day, Will invites me round to the house next door to his bakery to introduce me to one vital part of his business I've yet to meet. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. His family. Come in. You're very welcome. <laughs> Will's nan Enid and his dad Simon were all too happy to share some evidence of his lifelong love of baking. <laughs> I have a photo like this, very, very similar probably about that age. Yeah, written in the stars, yeah. I might say. It, it's it's one, great, it? <laughs> it's not, but I feel so embarrassed when I, when I see mine, when I dig it out, it's in black and white, and I look at it and I go, oh my God, I've got to hide it. But it, can you let me into um, a secret? How did he start as a baker? Well, I suppose it began with you, didn't it? Because you mm -hmm. taught me how to <laughs> bake, and then we ran the bakery for a couple of years, and then we'll, well, you took it on two uh, years ago. Yeah. But well, there would have been some absolute disasters if it wasn't for the old man's <laughs> yes. fault. No. And, and as far as Nana goes, she keeps the troops fed and watered, don't you, and, uh, and moral like support it. along the way. Yes, yeah, like to encourage you. And... <laughs> Does it make you feel really proud to, to see how... I'm so proud of Will. And it's great that he's here today talking to you. Right, I think I need to propose a toast. Ooh, and like what comes to mind really is the windmill. But no, it's got to be Enid. <laughs> Cheers. 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 As with myself, Will's family has played a vital role in shaping his passion for his craft. So when I came back the next morning, I couldn't wait to see how those years of family encouragement had finally paid off. Morning, Will. Good morning. How are you doing? Good to see you. It smells Thank great you. in here. Lovely, eh? You've been baking? I have. I have, <laughs> yeah. You got that loaf for me? One right here. <laughs> Lovely. That looks great. So that's the malted uh, bread that we did yesterday? Yes, with the sprouts in, uh, the stone ground flour, yeah. the rye, and uh, I suppose you'd like to have a taste, would you? Yes, please. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. So the interior, nice and holy, with that higher hydration in there as well, so quite light. Well, I knew there were going to be holes in it, and the aeration, look at that, that's yeah. unreal. It's down to the, the bulking and the, you know, the proper fermentation to get those holes in there as well. Oh, just sweet smell, caramel. Yeah. And you get that rye, but not too intense. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Winner. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is, that is lovely. And it's, there's no added sugar and it's sweet. Yeah, due to that, that sort of moulding the sprouting process, no added sugar, but really brings that natural sweetness mm. out of those grains, yeah. Just one thing missing. <laughs> Lots of butter. A good slab of butter on it, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic, that really, really is great. I've had a wonderful time. Looking forward to seeing you again at the Craftsman's Dinner. See you at the Craftsman's Dinner. See you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Cheers, thank Bye. you. Bye.